Are you ready for your punishment, slave? I sometimes scream out, no. When really, I mean, yes. Yes, yes! And this is why we have the safe word. Until we hear the safe word, we will not stop. She's not a Christian! Hey, this is Jason Rouse, and welcome to the Safe Word Podcast. My guest today is Bronston Jones. Jones. <laughs> How original. Yes. What kind of name is Bronston? I don't know. Some old family name. Might be Welsh. Is it? Nobody really knows. Uh, where are you? Uh, you live here in Los Angeles. Actually, you live in Venice Beach. Venice Beach, cool. man. How long have you been down there? Uh, I've been in Venice Beach for nine years. Love it, because it's filthy. It is kind of... It, it has the ocean... But it also has the toilet right next to the water. Yeah, it's where, you know, you, you can go out and get in the sand and fucking find a hypodermic needle, whatever you need. Is it, uh, is it strange for you to see your family like that and roaming the... Homeless? No, we, my family's been homeless for, for eons, <laughs> several, <laughs> several generations. But you are a stand-up comic here in Los Angeles and also the uh, mayor of Venice Beach. As I noticed, I spent a, a day or two down there hanging out with you and... Uh, it was all high fives and handshakes everywhere we went. Well, actually, all the bartenders and doormen were. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> if you live down there and you spend enough money in the bars, everybody gets to know you. I uh, I wouldn't call myself the mayor. I'm more of a you know like a, a degenerate town councilor. Yeah, you're you're, you're a non-confrontational uh, drunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm a happy drunk. It's, it's called a good customer in yeah. the bar industry. One year, I actually. <laughs> I was doing my taxes, and I just, just decided I'd figure out stuff that I couldn't write off. And I spent $23,000 in the whaler in a year. $23,000 yeah. on booze, just at one bar. Yeah. You're thirsty. It's about 500 bucks a week, I figured out. That is. I eat there, too. That's good, though. You're ambitious. Yeah. But were you never... Uh, you, did you start doing stand-up in Los Angeles? I did my first open mics ever in Denver, but then I moved out here, and then I didn't do it for a while, and then I got into. So I, I'm technically an LA comic. Okay, with but a bit you're, of an you're East from, Coast asshole attitude. So you're from Denver. No, I'm from outside of Philadelphia, but I went to uh, college in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, now, were you on some sort of sports scholarship, or because you're sports? Tall. Have, you, have you not noticed I'm one of the most uncoordinated people you've ever now, seen? Now, but in high school, you were probably this being America. I assume anybody with kind of abnormal uh, physical. Attributes, 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 out Retrobate. retrobate, retrobate, skill, yeah. uh, like uh, that. Kids get steered into uh, being professional athletes. Well, yeah, I was like six five, and like I'm six seven now. I was probably six five in high school, and I was walking across campus one day, and the basketball coach literally came over, saw me, and he's like, "Hey, hey, man, I, I want you to try out for the basketball team." I'm like, "I'm terrible at basketball." And he goes, "No, no, but I, he's like, I can train you. I can make you good." And I'm like, "I play ice hockey, dude." play basketball and then i got cut from the ice hockey team the next week oh <laughs> murphy's law isn't it <laughs> no no i picked my team and then you get dumped like a leper yeah what uh you played ice hockey yeah i played hockey like as a kid and then in high school but uh i wasn't i wasn't i wasn't very coordinated and also i was really tall and thin like i, I was probably weighed like at that point six six five i probably weighed like 170 pounds or something like i was like a rail and now i just do rails now, <laughs> so I'm trying to get back to my high school weight. Because of uh, your height stuff, I'm assuming it becomes a, uh, it's a gift and a curse. You got every other asshole who's under five foot going, holy fuck, look at you. Yeah, it's the little guys. The big guys don't cause problems. No. Big guys never because it's, it's kind of like, you know, they say like, like sharks. You know, like sharks don't actually want to get in a fight because they don't want to get injured. Like wild animals, they're, they're, they actually avoid confrontation. Yeah, unless it's life-threatening. Yeah, or they're hungry. One Did the you... Now, I know Venice is not that kind of place where it's kind of punchy kind of place unless you're a junkie or a scumbag, but people, you get confrontations and stuff from people with the Napoleon complexes and stuff uh, during Yeah, you school. know, I get, it, I get it in bars and stuff, but usually what it is is because I'm sitting down and some guy, some little guy will start some shit, and because I'm a comic, or, you know, you know, you're just a yeah, wise yeah. ass. Yeah. I just say whatever I feel like to whoever I feel like whenever I feel like it, and I'm not usually being a dick. I'm usually trying to be funny, and then some little guy will take it wrong. Yeah. But then what happens is... Perfect. It's, we're uh, we're on Melrose Avenue. Sorry, man. I got a lot of I had a lot of burritos. 
I, I love the studio that, that, you, that you rented for this. this it's gig. so nice. I'm Canadian, so this is like being outdoors and be able to do something creative is like a big deal for me, especially during. Is this the- creative? So far, it sucks. <laughs> it totally sucks. But you know what? What am I going to do? I got bottom feeder guests on the show, you know? You know? Yeah, you're asking me about my high school athletics, which, which is an interesting thing because nobody's ever once asked me about that. Anyway, so long story short, so these little guys will start something and I'll just stand up directly in their personal space. Yeah. And then when they look up, a foot and a half into my face, they usually quietly back away. Yeah. A pain in the ass. Yeah. It's kind of like equivalent, like people just have insecurities about things that they don't understand. Like they see tattoos or a certain thing that's not familiar to them. They look at that as an opportunity to challenge it for no other reason that they don't understand. Yeah. Fucking idiots. People people are fearful. They're, they're, I don't know. It's little guys. And, and it's the thing that those guys haven't been punched in the face lately. Anybody who's like a professional fighter, a killer, they don't, they're don't. they never in that situation. You know no. what I mean? Because they, 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 they have nothing to prove. No, and then they can pull your head right off your neck in most cases. But I had a friend who uh, I grew up with who's a professional boxer. He's yeah. a 160-pound guy. And uh, he knew he, he had a reputation. He was being a fighter and a tough guy. And people would come up to him all the time and start shit with him. And he just ring their bell. It was always I. I many of times I tell their girlfriend or friend, I go like, "You need to get the fuck out of here. This is yeah. not your your buddy's going to end up in the hospital. He's going to get knocked out, smack his skull on the ground, and then he's going to be uh, moving a wheelchair through a straw." Uh, bonus. Yeah, but then he gets good parking for the rest of his life. So that's fine. You know, yeah, there's benefits. Sense. Yellow for the silver linings, man. <laughs> silver linings. He could probably do speeches in schools. Yeah. I mean, he's got a career, more of a career than I do. He might be pissing into a bag, but you know mm-hmm. what? He's going to have a place to keep his change. Yeah, he's never looking for a toilet. He's got it on him. <laughs> or a pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and then you moved from uh, uh, Colorado to Los Angeles. So you'd already been doing stand-up for a little bit in Colorado? I did. I did it like three times at Comedy okay. Works. and. It's so funny because I finally went back there and played it now that I'm a real like professional comedian. Yeah, seasoned. And I saw the room and I was like, it's it's the it's one of the greatest laid out rooms ever. I keep hearing that. I heard it's Colorado's got a really good club there. What's the name yeah, of it? It's called Comedy Works. Comedy Works. There's two of them. There's some, it's the one downtown. But it is two funny. Two in the same city. Hmm? Two, in, two Comedy Works in the same city. Well, they, they, it's the other one's like kind of like outskirts. far south. Yeah, outskirts. Is that the more you get more of a suburban audience opposed to the downtown? I, club? I, don't, I don't know. They don't hire me. Yeah, <laughs> it's fucking the worst. Eh? Isn't it weird how places that you kind of come up in have want nothing to do with you, and then once yeah. you blow up on a television show or, or in a public medium, yeah. oh, put his picture on the wall. He started here, you know, all yeah. that kind of horse shit. Well, it's so funny because my first my first open mic ever, I had read a, uh, you know, one of those those how to do comedy books, uh-huh. and they said tape every set. So I was like, all right, so I, ta- I taped it. And I did my set, and I thought I was miserable. Like I, like I thought it was awful. And so on the car drive back to, I lived in Boulder at the time. I was like, all right, I'll listen to this thing. And there was just laughter all the way through it. Uh-huh. And I, and I was like, oh, maybe you can't hear it when you're on stage because I was just so buzzing, and you know, like yeah. I, did, I didn't know. And so I went, <laughs> like a month later, I did my second one, and I taped that. And I didn't hear any laughter on stage, and so I'm like, ah, oh, I probably killed again. And then I listened to it, and it was like, it was crickets. Uh, I, yeah. I, ate, I ate shit big time. You get caught up in the euphoria of being on stage, yeah. so you're already electrified. I had a similar situation, but uh, I had laughs. Because <laughs> uh, at the comedy club in Toronto, uh, when it used to be up in Young and Eglinton, the Yuck Yucks are they had a video camera that would shoot the stage. You bring a VHS tape in and then they record your set. Mm-hmm. Well, what they didn't tell me was it, the only audio is through the mic. So the audience isn't mic. So it's just, it's just me. And it's just a single shot. That's kind of cropped like a portrait almost. Yeah. And, uh, and there's no response. I was horrified, yeah. but then I realized that, uh, I set a secondary mic up on the stage and then watched the tape with the other, my audio yeah. playing. I was like, oh, okay, there's an extra show in there. But uh, yes, yeah, especially in this city, at least you acknowledge it that it was shit. Because you see guys that will perform here all the time. They'll come off stage after they've t- clearly tanked with this shit eating grin, like, ah, huh? That's what it's what about, that? right? Yeah. That's what like, look what I did. No, what did you do? Everyone's just confused and <laughs> bewildered. Dude, I've seen people who've been in it for like 10, 12 years, and they're still just terrible. And, and I, I kind of wonder, like, at, at what point do you just quit? You know what I mean? Like, like It's probably because that's all they have. I don't know. It's a strange delusions of grandeur. That's what they should change the Hollywood sign to. <laughs> just delusions of grandeur. Just super big wall. And it just on fire all the mm-hmm. time. Remind me of home, actually. City, city of broken dreams. You know, the thing is, I think you have to be delusional to make it. 
because yeah. he, the, the odds of making it in, in any entertainment industry is, is zero, you know? Like, yeah. nobody, nobody makes it. No. You know, you can name a hundred stars, but, you know, I, I can name a hundred waiters. Yeah. Oh, yeah, be. yeah, yeah. It is a very strange uh, dynamic here. We've talked about it a bunch of times on the podcast, but um, speaking of comedy, you're uh, all en route to go to the Edinburgh Festival yeah, in go, August. Doing the Edinburgh Fringe for my third time. Love it. That's, That's fantastic. It's incredible. What um, are you going to go do some dates in London or be in this? I'm going to go to London for like two weeks before, and I'm just trying to set up just pick up stuff just to just to run material test yeah, jokes, yeah. just to get back in the vibe. And actually, the show I'm doing in Edinburgh is a little bit weird because I I I have trouble sticking to a set list anyway. Yeah. And so I named the show last year. I had a name for the show last year, but if you there were a lot of people who came to see me five six times because I would run different bits in the middle just to keep myself interested. Yeah. And so I figure I, I I'm just calling this one what comes out. Because a lot of times I say to the sound guy right before I get on stage, like especially at my show in Venice, is because I'm hosting, so I really have no control over what's going to happen. Is I'm just like, ah, let's see what comes out of my mouth. Oh, you're hosting, and then you have guests on your show. No, no, I mean the, the show I host in Venice. Ah, uh, because oh, I usually okay. look at the sound guy right before I get up, and I go, ah, let's see what comes out of my mouth. Do you want to tell our, our listeners? Because you've been running, uh, you and your business partner there, been doing uh, the show at Venice. Yeah. At Matt, the Matt Devlin and I, we started a show at the Venice Townhouse which is uh, the oldest continually operating bar in all of LA because the, the basement it's was awesome. a speakeasy during Prohibition. And it's, it's the only bar that they actually could keep on the same premises when they you know, tried to hide it. And so uh, it's cool. It's, it's a cool, cool room. It's, it's very you know, cool the stage, bar. like the, the, <laughs> the stage height or the ceiling height on the stage is 6'10", so I only have three inches above my head, which I, I didn't realize in the beginning. And I used to have a lot of bits where I'd throw my arms up and I'd smack that ceiling. Uh, there's all these low hanging beams. Like I've, that I've, one in uh, London, I got you the uh, oh yeah, yeah spot. top secret. And I told you, it was probably you probably had to bend your head. I think on the stage. Yeah, well that that stage had that weird kind of arch. arch. Yeah, and so I I basically was just like leaning on the arch the whole time, <laughs> just talking to the people, hanging from the ceiling like a chimpanzee. Yeah, I'm a little bit of an ape. But it's a, it's a, they do burlesque there. It's really cool. Yeah, it's fun. So every it's Wednesday nice. night. And it's it's packed, 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 standing room only every Wednesday. And it's you know, it's it's hard for me to say it, but it, it is true. It's it's one of the best shows and, uh, in all and of LA. If you're a young up and coming comic and you're coming to California, email Bronson. He's got tons of spots on the show. <laughs> <laughs> email go, me every day, please. Email him and call him. <laughs> you want to give out your phone number here? Yeah. Be as aggressive and uncouth as possible. Or just show up at the show and just say, Hey, can I get up? Yeah, yeah. I like that yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, I love it when they ask me if it's an open mic. I'm like, Yeah, yeah. It's an open mic with Brian yeah. Callen and J Big J Okerson and all these monsters. Yeah, yeah they're just open mic. <laughs> it's an open mic, but the list is six months long. So and good luck. And that's just for guys that are great. I play it twice a year. Yeah. I do good once out of the two. <laughs> they usually really bite into what I'm doing or they just reject it. You're, but you're I, a bit I, of a specialty actor. You know that. Especially acted. That's what my mother said when I was four. See, see that kid over there rubbing his own shit on his chest? He's especially act. <laughs> like when you were just pulling shit out of your diapers and just rubbing it on the walls, oh, you were practicing for your whole life. I should have been a painter. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I should have done. Um, oh, I got to quote myself. I just, because I, I, I was sending somebody some, some quotes from uh, like George Carlin and Richard Pryor. Like, just because he was asking me, these, like, who influences my comedy? And I just sent him a couple of quotes to really, like, this is what... I don't give a shit if people are really laughing as long as they're engaged. I'm cool, which is a, a Carlin theme. And then Pryor's all about the truth. But then the first quote on my quotes thing was me, where there was some stupid article in some uh, Chicago paper where the re these two kids went in and they said, heckling is the greatest part of comedy. <laughs> and it was this whole thing. And I just read it and I just I went ballistic. And so my quote is, heckling is sort of like... Going to a painter before he's finished his painting, shitting on the middle of it, and then yelling at him, telling me he sucks because he didn't bother to yeah. <laughs> include the shit into his into his painting. Yeah, exactly. And then complain about the color of the shit <laughs> after they've done it. You know, I don't like that. Yeah, there's I was a, just helping. There's a lot of uh, righteous, self righteous people who want to put their two cents in in our paintings, and uh, and it's not. It's my business. Yeah. If you don't like it, then uh, then go somewhere else. Yeah. That's why I don't work that much. <laughs> not, not in this country. Not in this country. I, well, I think the thing. I think the thing is, you, you, your, your act is extreme. You know, which is, a, I think it's a great thing. You know, there's no confusing you with any other comic. I found a word. Yeah. Provocateur. 
Oh, okay. That's what I am. You're, you're an agent provocateur. You're a foreigner album. I'm a. Uh, I incite uh, argument and conflict amongst the audience <laughs> in their own moral values and stuff. What's that? We're, 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 we're recording something. We're right recording now. something. Come on, tell them what you're selling. What are you selling? I'm selling chocolates for my after school program. All right. It's all at the regular price of five dollars. Get it while you can. <laughs> you know how it is out here. Really for the school program. No, for real, it's for the school program. It's only five dollars a pop. I don't eat candy. All right, thank you. Let's nice doing business with you. You're buying candy. <laughs> yes, he's we- buying candy for the after school program, and you know how that we do it. Oh yes, I do. There you go. What school program is it for? Junior careers. Junior, Junior careers. careers. Look at him. He's already. I you're selling chalk bars. Dude, I used that's, to sell. That's a lot of change. <laughs> he always gave me a twenty back for my ten. I, I was like, this kid, he really needs this program a lot. <laughs> it's getting. When I was in high school, I used to sell drugs, not chocolate bars. No, he he knows what he's doing. There you go. You should, you should go to like raves because you can move a whole lot of sweets with those. He loves the sweets. Look at that, M&M. Look at that. It's M&M's fun size. That's a, I want a kaleidoscope of shit coming out of me. The peanuts. Thanks, man. You're welcome. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> All right, monster. Yes, I do got skills on the mic. I just like to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I talk every day and every night and all night. Right. You can be a stand-up comic. That's what we do. See, that's all we do is we talk. People ask me to karaoke. I'm like, all right, tell them to turn the music off and I'll just perform for three minutes. I do Karma Karma Chameleon with a heart on. Thank you. No, there you go. M&M's. I just, I, just, uh, I, just, I just bought $2 worth of M&M's for five bucks. That's pretty cool. So you're, you've never been a bargain hunter. I just needed, I, needed, I needed a guest on this thing. I needed somebody to bring the energy up a little bit. You were looking in that uh, bin of the chocolate bars like there was jello shots in the bottom. Of the <laughs> I was trying to figure out how to rob my waiter now. <laughs> Let's talk about blacking out. Blacking out? Oot. Blacking oot. Blacking oot. That's getting drunk in Canada, you black oot. <laughs> um, you like booze. I like to drink. I definitely like to drink. $500 a week? Yeah, because you know what I mean. Because I was, I, I lived, I used to live directly next door to the place, so I eat lunch there. So that, that uh-huh. you know, there's there's twenty dollars, twenty dollars a pop. Yeah, but and that, that only leaves eighty for the booth. So you have something to throw up in between bars. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, here's here's the thing: is I woke up today and I rubbed my leg and I was like, oh, that hurts!" And I have these, I have a massive bruise that's coming up. Yeah, you've been robbed. I have no idea what happened to me. None. Yeah, but you said you were on a date. You might want to call her for a fucking second opinion. <laughs> How did it go? You said you were going to put in a word for me from behind. <laughs> I said I was going to blow a load for you, dude. Oh. Come on. Dude, please, if you're going to quote me, quote me accurately. All right. You don't have to hold back on this podcast. Did she? Is she from Venice? But yeah, she's from Venice. What do you think? I've had like she's a, like five foot tall. I tried to date in this uh, in this city. It's terrible. Like you've been here for how many years now? I've I've been here for nineteen years. Nineteen years. How? Yeah. Do you, why are you still smiling? Because you know what it is. It, <laughs> when I moved here, I moved here with somebody, and we were together for another ten years. You were with the chick was, for ten years. I was with the. Uh, we were together for fourteen and a half years. Yeah. How old were you when you met? We met my senior year of college. Jesus. So from 21 to 35, I was How, dating her. And uh, what kind of roller coaster ride was that? It was actually cool. I mean, like, you still friends or? Yeah, yeah, we're still friends. Wow. She actually moved off to Africa to save the planet, and I wanted to stay here and tell dick jokes and fuck whores on the beach. <laughs> She's well, over there taking a pack of silverback gorillas, and you're fucking the homeless up the ass so they get a hot <laughs> meal and a place to stay. <laughs> She works for the UN now and like actually like writes policy positions for, for different countries, how, how they want biofuels to come in and deal with saving their ecology and their economy. I'm going to go on a limb here, but uh, what did you do wrong so she left? <laughs> <laughs> that's a long time. Yeah. but that's, And the thing is, but we never got married. And so when she left, the whole thing was she, she wanted to like save the world. I wanted to work in entertainment. Yeah. And she knew if she stayed here, she'd uh, yeah, she'd hate, hate me you. forever. Yeah. And if I moved there, I'd hate her forever. That is a tough one. And so we amicably split. And we're still we're still friends. And the fact that you had explained to her, I'm going to make $7,000 a year doing comedy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> She's like, what are you, crazy? I can make can 80 grand a year to, fucking can, saving the yeah. planet. Can I get some money, to, honey, so I can get drunk with my friends again? <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> 
can you leave it on the table because I know you got work in the morning? <laughs> well, <laughs> what's funny is is because I was doing I started stand up and I was doing it while I was with her, but because I was protecting her because I actually cared about her. Yeah, my act was was very. It was more like a Seinfeld, like it was very observational, and it was all it was all out, outside. And then once you're running a race on one leg, what's that? You were running a race on one leg. I don't even know what the fuck you just said. <laughs> like having an arm tied behind your back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I didn't realize it because it was like, but I was, I was into like Seinfeld and I was into that observational stuff, which you, you, you're not, it doesn't hurt anybody. It's yeah, safe. Yeah. And, uh, but then I, you want to do comedy we that broke hurts up people. And, and I, I had quit comedy for a couple of years and I got back into it. And then when I got into it, I was like, oh, you do comedy? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I googled my own name. I, I, I said Bronson Jones comedian, and uh, Google came back and said, "Do you mean Bronson Jones quote comedian unquote?" Yeah, yeah. And I said question yes, mark. and then it said why question mark <laughs> comedian question mark. Did your your parents alive? Yeah, my mom's my mom is alive. My dad's alive. Sorry to hear that. I don't. I don't. I haven't seen my dad since I was twenty. I haven't seen my dad since he died. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you should call him. No, no. Why are you so selfish? They uh, they cremated him. I don't know if he's got the. Uh, the why don't house. we get? Why don't, why don't we make this podcast? We can have another guest and we go to a psychic. Oh really? Megan. I don't know if a psychic would work. I'd have to go and get some proper witches, chicken bones and blood and stuff like that. There's a voodoo shop up the street. Yeah, I've been in there. Yeah. That's where I get all my potions and stuff. Is that where you, is that where you get your I necklaces? Got, uh, I, I went in there and I go, you got anything that will get rid of this fucking rash around my asshole? <laughs> and uh, some salad tongs and pull that fucking shit-covered condom out. <laughs> and uh, can I get the taxidermy fox, please? Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's a nice ring. I'll take that. Yeah, oh, look at that. So it's just Mother's Day is coming up. What kind of candle should I burn to get rid of my AIDS? Do you? Do, do, yeah. <laughs> is that a black candle or the brown one? Because he was a lot bigger than me. What? Uh, do your parents come out to watch you? Yeah, my mom. My mom see me, and uh, this is this is this is actually a great story. Is I, I was doing Philadelphia area, and I had two shows two nights. Like I was featuring, and I told uh, my mom, I go, hey, the first night I'm going to do my TV safe sort of political social stuff, and I go, and the second night I'm going to talk about my real life. And she goes, well, what does that mean? You don't want me to come to one of those? And I'm like, no, you can come. Just keep but in just mind, be, it's theater. Beware that you might see something that you don't want to know about your son. And she's like, "All right." So she, she ended up coming to both, and I, I'm on stage, and I'm really looking, you know, I'm doing some just you know, dick jokes and just stupid stuff. And then I I was I was staying up in New York, and I was dating a woman who was a prostitute. Like that was her job, as you do in show business. Yeah. I want and, a girl that works <laughs> nights too. How about a hooker? <laughs> yeah. And uh, how old was she? Can you elaborate on this girl? What she looked like? How she was. She was beautiful. She was. She was like strikingly beautiful. And, and I met her in a bar. And there's. There's a. I have a great bit about it that's developed over the years because it's really like you know I love telling stories and and I can tell yeah. it in three minutes or I can tell it in ten. Uh-huh. Actually, I won't do a three minute anymore because then I sell her out because it's real funny. Oh, I'm dating a hooker, right? That's funny. It makes her the jump punchline. I dated but a hooker before. I like to change it into. Then I'm the punchline because I'm getting mentally screwed up and she's not. And then I flip it on the audience. Like everybody in this room is a hooker. She's the only one who's honest about it. Yeah. But anyway, I'm up on stage and I'm getting ready to. I fucked a guy for a purse once. Yeah, whatever, man. Who knew? <laughs> Dude, you fucked a guy for a purse? Yeah. Why did you need a purse? You're gay. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. I said that when I, after I spit his cock out. I'm like, I don't need a purse. <laughs> I'm not gay. When I sp- his, his Why balls did you spit it out? Why did you swallow? Spit out his balls, or is, mm-hmm. I'm not. Were you there? What? Hey, huh? Wait a minute. Anyway, let so me see those let, let me finish the story. So I'm on stage and I start the bit, and I realize as I'm doing it, I'm looking at my mom, and when I reveal that she's a prostitute, your mother was a prostitute. No, but I reveal that the woman I'm dating was a prostitute. Oh, fuck. While my mom's in the crowd, is I just did this, and I have a tattoo on my right hand, which is normally on my mic hand, and it says truth. And it was just for my mom. Like, no one else yeah, knew yeah, what yeah. I was doing. It was just let her know that this story is true. And so I do the whole thing, and it's funny. It's getting laughs. But the whole time, I'm really kind of going, what's my mom think about me dating a prostitute? And uh, so now, after- You have a tattoo of truth on your wrist. How can you read that when you're up to your elbow in a guy's asshole? Because <laughs> it comes out shitty. The truth is shitty, dude. <laughs> the truth hurts. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Sorry about the, the truth. Ring. You can't handle the <laughs> <Yeah>. truth. <laughs> I'm not taking a ring off either. 
All right, so I got to get to the end of this. <laughs> you, so, you are easily so distracted. I go, to, I go to the bar at the end of this the set, and uh, and like one of my uncles just walks right past me because I just talked about cocaine and stuff, and, and he just walks past me and won't even look at me. And I'm like, oh, God, because I come from a really conservative family. I'm like, I can't, I have no idea what's going through my mom's mind. And I get up to her, and I'm like, I'm like oh, hey, Mom, so what did you think? She goes, I liked it. And I go, what did you like better, last night or tonight? And she goes, you know what? Last night I saw a very funny comedian on stage. Tonight I saw my son. And that was like, literally, it's the best compliment I've ever gotten. And then from asked for the house ever. keys back and told you to fucking move out. Put you fucking hookers in with your fucking Star Wars sheets. What is it? What did we raise here? Yeah. How long are you with the whore for? How long what? <laughs> How long were you with the whore for? Uh, for like three weeks. I was in New York, so I was, I was with her there, and then I flew back to L.A. Did she just come home from work and put her feet up on the couch and go, oh, my pussy's killing me today. <laughs> Could you come over here and give me a beaver rub with a popsicle stick? <laughs> Look at this thing. It looks like an elephant ear with piss in it. She's like, it really hurts when you kiss it. When you kiss it. Oh, just kneel on it to distract um, me. No, I'll tell you what was funny. My last night there... Because I, I told her I was running this. I was working on it. You know, she'd watch videos at night with me. And she's like, oh, can you tell him this? And Because she was really like, she wanted them to know she wasn't a street walker, but she wasn't top end. She was like a hotel hooker. A professional. Yeah, like concierge call girl. Concierge call her up and be like, hey, the room so-and-so want us to see the somebody. Dump one. Yeah. And uh, bring the ladle. And she had this She had this thing because I was like, I, you know, in the beginning, I'm like, come on, how, how safe am I with you? And she goes, you know, you're safer with me than you are with a slut. And I go, What? Yeah, and she goes, "Yeah, I have a series of rules. I will not violate any of those rules. I'm not willing to die for five hundred bucks. But you put five Jägermeisters into a slut, you can do whatever you want to her, right? And so that I would know. I don't hang out with those kind of girls. <laughs> five, six. What do you have a loaded gun on the table? <laughs> That's all it takes. So she, uh, <laughs> I need like a twenty bottles of vodka and a blindfold <laughs> to pull that game. Yeah, yeah. Five shots of Jäger. Yeah, Jäger, Jäger. Put on some Jäger." Anyway, so I tell that part of that because I, I started anything she told me, I would figure out a way to put it into the bit, and, and it just grew, right? So I hit that part where I go, and just, just so you guys all know, prostitutes look down on sluts, right? All of a sudden, from the back of the room, you just hear a word, and she's standing up. She's like hammered, <laughs> waving five daggers, waving her ham, and literally the Swinging entire wig over the, the entire top of her crowd head. turned around and they looked at her. Ew. And and they realized how hot she was, and and I was like, oh my god, she's so excited. I'm talking about her, or she's marketing right now. I'm not yeah. really sure what. <laughs> yeah, hey, it's my show tonight. Could you keep your <laughs> pussy out of it for a fucking hour and a half? Hey, you're not working tonight. <laughs> yeah, could you put some clothes pegs over your piss flaps? I'm trying to over here and entertain these people, <laughs> and the smell is killing us. Someone chop some onions over by my lady's hole. <laughs> Do you love her? Did I? I dated a hooker. She hung herself in her uh, uh, apartment. While you were dinner? No. After I had sex with her. So basically, <laughs> she, that, you were her rock bottom. <laughs> no, this was years after, like uh, 10 years after the fact. But yeah, she killed herself. Yeah. She hung herself. Yeah, so this is really taking a fun turn. Hey. I don't really know what happened to this girl. Welcome to the Safe Word Podcast. <laughs> Jason Rouse. And we're talking about girls who don't know how to hold on. I have a safe word. I give it to all my girlfriends. Is if you tell anybody, I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> no, this is this is how I know if, if we've gotten too far and we need to just bail out at the moment. Is, is there like a crowd of people in the room? <laughs> she and I. Some uh, girl. We, Our, my safe word is I do. <laughs> if I hear her say I do, I'm done. Come on. I got to do some bits here, right? <laughs> I do? <laughs> I don't know what you want. I think Get it, I, it's a marriage joke. I think you're r running risk at uh, some sort of death if it's more than two syllables, or more than one syllable, like hot, cold, red. Have you ever? Have you ever? Have you ever? Um, do you, Do you like chokes? Choke sex? Right now? <laughs> yeah, right now. I think people are going to point if you start strangling me and fucking me <laughs> face to face. <laughs> um, yeah, come I'm, on. This is this is this is West Hollywood. Nobody will care. <laughs> I'm a I'm a strangler. Yeah. I was doing it with this and girl once. I know what I used to do before I like to come. I like to take my thumbs and dig them right into their eyeballs until they fucking <laughs> scream. And then and then daddy unloads a fucking big chunk of yellow fucking fondue. Just bleh. It's like a, a bullfrog throwing up tapioca. Mm -hmm. And Rub then we it. kiss. And then we kiss. My, my favorite. Do you like to be strangled? Mm -hmm. if, if, I, if, you yeah. were, if some girl was riding you and I came in with a golf club and just started smashing <laughs> your legs, 
could you finish? That might be what happened to my leg last night. I don't know. <laughs> were you at my house last night? I was. I was whipping golf balls at your shins <laughs> while you were trying to fuck the brown of that girl's asshole. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> all right. All right. You think I don't know. You, yeah, sex is fun. Sex is fun. But you're, you're 40. 44. 44. So I'm a year and a half younger. How Do you notice any changes in yourself? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, I, my chest hair is getting gray. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you got the same. I got yeah. that. You're, yeah, you're, I, you're about a year and a half ahead of me. But I'll I got have the that. little whys. Mm, yeah. Fascinating. Oh, I'm thinking. Should I'm talking about my beard. Or do and I don't mean my girlfriend. But uh, you, you, did, you went on a date. The girl was nice. Where'd you meet her? Last night. <laughs> well, this is what's funny. So I met her last night at this bar. Where she had gone with some guy who, uh, like, like with like a bunch of people went, and this guy was like so into her, and he was loaded, and he was drop like, the ball, Johnny. He he starts freaking out because she's trying to leave with me, and he starts like grabbing her that? wrist and stuff, and I'm like I'm like get off her, dude, and he freaks he starts freaking out to the point where literally he's in a it's fight sad. he's in a fight with the bouncers and stuff, and then while while they've got him on the thing and he's screaming at me from the street, taking off his shirt, the police walk up and Perfect. he literally looked at him and was like. Oh, kill you i'll kill you and i'm like dude the cops are right and like i'm like so tell me it was kind of fun to watch him get cuffed it's so fun. i have no sympathy for fucking idiot drunks and i've been one yeah. I, I, on occasion you know but um I, I i just especially when it comes about women if guys trying to be a hero for a girl who clearly is not interested yeah you know what i mean what he's saying to her is i i don't want to take you home and rape you yeah when oh she's clearly being led out of there uh, willingly by you, yeah, which is a bigger mistake. <laughs> and he was he was a little guy. Again, yeah. it's the little guys that are the problem. Yeah, I remember being on a bus. I might even mention this. I was in the bus in my hometown, Bragger, <laughs> right in public transit. Wow, dude, seriously? And there was this dude. Your hometown is big enough for a bus? This big. Uh, it's uh, about five hundred fifty thousand people. Oh wow! So there's two buses. There's two buses, <laughs> and there's a kayak that goes through the sewer. Uh huh. And there's a guy in there. He's I thought you guys just ra- rode your moose around up there. Our mooses? <laughs> Our meese. Meese? Your meese. There's this the thing as meese. It's just moose. It's just moose? Yeah, like crows. Unless there's more than one, then it's a murder. A murder of crows. There's this huge guy yeah. on the bus. He's uh, he's probably about your height, but probably about 60, 70 pounds heavier. Yeah. Just a big old dude. Like me if I ate me. You if you ate you. And he uh, and some guy on the bus says, wow, you're big. And then he went into this little monologue about how it's never the uh, big guys that start the wars. It's always the little guys. You know, he's, he's just kind of a guy trying to get through the day like everyone else. But because he's, he's so undeniably big that yeah. he thinks, anyway, come back to bed. So this was his monologue? Yeah, I totally dude, fucked dude. it up. I got ADD. I probably shouldn't be doing this outside. Because you got you should see him, guys. Cars. He's just looking around, looking for birds. I got squirrels <laughs> running around behind me. There's motorcycles. I thought it would help if I had the headphones on, but I'm I'm still having no, you problems just, focusing. You just, you just look like a douche. Were you were you uh, were you academically inclined during your? You know what's funny is actually you asked about changes. Is I'm I'm ADD now, but I never used to be. Okay, I think it's all the drugs. Yeah, it just kind of burn out your uh, yeah. gauges. I used to be able to focus and like really stick with stuff. I used to be like super type A. Like constantly, like if I wasn't working, I was looking for work and, you know, like just constantly progressing. Now you've got bed sores. Cranked out scripts and stuff. And now it's like, ah, it's, it's two in the afternoon. I got to meet him at four. I should get out of bed now. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We've, we've been trying to do this for about two months. Yeah. At least. But we've made it. And uh, you've got uh, your trip to Edinburgh. What shoes are you doing in uh, Los Angeles? This this will probably come out uh, last week of uh, of July before your trip. But uh, what do you? How, well, what, at that point, if it's the last week of July, I'll already be in London, and and I'm just sort of jumping around London to to pick up spots and just get back in the UK vibe. Cool. But uh, yeah, if you're if you guys are looking for me in LA in September, you can always find me every Wednesday at Townhouse, and then anywhere else where they'll put me on stage. Do you have a website where people can reach out to you? Yeah, Bronston.com. Bronson. Or my Twitter is at Bronicus, B-R-O-N-I-C-U-S. Cool, man. Cool. And you can find me on Facebook. I used to be the only Bronson Jones. Now I'm the only white one. Yeah, I know. There's a, there's a couple of black Jason Rouses. Yeah. And there's some Australian DJ and some sketch guy, I think, in Portland or something. Can you shit. comment on that? Yeah. There's a six foot two inch beautiful blonde woman who just walked into this patio. Uh, 
Uh, I'm done with this no, podcast. I lived in Sweden for three years. That is not <laughs> what you think it is, buddy. You put a fire hose on that, strip it down, and throw it into a warehouse. Just another hog on the fucking farm, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do love that joke you do where you, where you look down and you're like, is it? Beautiful girls in Sweden, just like you. Or, or what do you yeah, say? I go, there's blonde, blue-eyed girls in Scandinavia, like you, except they're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like that. And it's usually some girl who's clearly attractive and uh, drawn to the eye. And I, I like to dishovel and uh, pull people's, de- deflate everyone's ego and just balance the, uh, the field out. Um, this woman is wearing shorts that are about six inches long. Total. Yeah, that's a big trend here. The short shorts have come back. Yeah, like, and her legs are like as long as mine. Yeah. But not as hairy, though. No. <laughs> that's a chick. It's funny how you got hair on your toes mm-hmm. and more around your shit ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually, I it looks up. like someone kicked a peanut butter jar through a hair piece. I hooked up with a chick once. She was 6'5", right? And I did it. Really? Basically, for story. and she was, she was like proportional. So if you saw her from a distance, she really she's probably like 5'8". Mm-hmm. And then as she got closer and closer, you realize she was just getting bigger and taller and bigger. So like, but that means she was like a big girl. Was she thick, big, or just? Well, I mean, she was proportional, so she yeah. looked proper. But that also makes her hips way bigger. That makes everything bigger. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so she, I mean, she probably weighed like one seven eighty. And uh, and while we were having sex, I, I kept trying to throw her around the way I throw any other person around, and she would like resist and throw me around, and I, I was really like, I think I'm getting raped here. Yeah, it kind of demasculates. Yeah, it's like not un- very untraditional to get dominated by a woman. Yeah, that's why you put a taser under the pillow and when your balls <laughs> deep in you, give her a couple, <laughs> simmer her down, I'm give just, her a sugar cube, just a little bit of the ruby, just a, just a duller, the, duller the, the happy sleep. Mm-hmm. A Xanax, that'll do it. Is a Xanax good? I think I've taken them before. It's like an uh, anti-anxiety thing. Yeah, it's a, it's relaxes you. They're good. Like if you can't sleep or something, a lot of people take them. I've you're only coming done. off a coke bender. Yeah, you know if you're if you're like you're not getting drunk fast enough. Take some oh, downers. does it accelerate it? Yeah, it's a downer. Wow. Yeah, are you a pot smoker? I don't like pot. Huh. Yeah. Hard liquor and handgun, Bronston. <laughs> Hard liquor and handguns? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm a, I'm a total weapons advocate. You got brothers and sisters? I got a younger brother and an older sister. Nice. Yeah. How hot's your younger brother? He's, he's cute, dude. <laughs> he's he's really they, good at what we do. Are they in show business? My brother actually, my brother and I own a company out here in LA making TV commercials. Cool. And uh, my sister lives back on the East Coast. Is she, she's she's an alpaca you? farmer. Uh, a, like a. Like alpaca, they look like llama. Yeah. But they're a little bit smaller. She's got like 90 or 100 of them or something. So everybody, all your siblings, including yourself, has been a big letdown for your family. Oh, yeah. I'm sure my mom, I'm sure my mom every night cries herself to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to get your family on board, especially at early stages of your career. And yeah. then they see a peak. And then when it starts to peter out, then they all jump ship off of it. Yeah. Like she's, she's, she'll see me on stage. She's like, "Oh wow, you're re- you're really good. You can actually hold your own with these other comics." Yeah. And then she'll ask how much I made, and I'm like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I made like fifty bucks. I flew across the country for that." <laughs> I know, not even the cost. You're just in the red constantly. Yeah. But you know, so she's she's thinking about all the private schools and college that she paid for for me. She's wondering why, <laughs> just why. Yeah, but you know, a lot of people might even go into the field that they've trained in but they're just miserable but you're you seem like a upbeat happy person i just know this is like I'm, I'm 44 which means most of my friends at home are married and have kids and when i look at most of them they look older than i do like you look way oh, younger yeah, than yeah. your age oh yeah and yeah. Your, your friends at home with family, wife and kids and a house they probably look old because like their life is so stressful trying to maintain this this facade of of Oh, being it's an it's adult. A, the grind. It's the worst. Between the traffic, the fat wife, and the little bastards, and the job you hate, you're, you're at war with yourself every day. Yeah. I don't know how people don't just turn the wheel in the traffic. I don't even think they're at war. I think they've given up. They're prisoners. Yeah, it's settled. And I think people don't want to die alone, and they have children and stuff. And I don't know. I don't know. I got to. Everybody gotta, dies alone, unless you're in a car wreck. Yeah, or a school bus full of blind kids. Nah. Never saw it coming. 
<laughs> I was gonna try and do a punch on that. And I was like, "No, nah, you're you're actually you're accurate." That's a factual statement. What are uh, you? Let's get back to the Edinburgh Festival. I, I was uh, lucky enough to do it and uh, cursed at the same time to do it in 2004, which is a, a mixed thing for me. Can we crack an M and M? I'll, I'll eat them at the end. Well, I'm, I'm trying to find somebody with a with a peanut allergy because I want to yeah. see if that shit's real. Like I want to. Oh yeah, it's people's throats close up. Really? I think it's called natural selection. If you're going to be taken out from a peanut. <laughs> yeah, you're taken out by W.D. Darwin. There is so many short shorts. Anyway. Um, so how are you? <laughs> <I'm dead>. this <laughs> is, are people still listening at this point? If anybody's yeah. still listening at this point, please tweet me and please, be like, I'm, hey, I'm trying to work I'm still this listening. out as I go. I don't, I'm not even really sure of the show, what it is exactly. And I don't think it is anything. I think it's just me talking to people that I like to talk to that I think are, are worth it. Yeah, you just, this, the only reason you have a podcast is because it's almost like having friends because somebody will actually sit with you for an hour. Yeah. And then once you're done, they're like, ah, oh, good, I'm out of here. Yeah, oh, hang with- oh, they look at their fake watch. It's not even on. Oh, fuck, I'm late. I got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh. Like this podcast was just a conversation. This is boring. Well, I want to do uh, how many weeks are there in a year? What's that? How many weeks are in a year? How many weeks in a year? 52. 52 weeks in a year. Yeah. I'm going to yep. do 52 episodes. This is like episode 9, maybe 10. Wait, you were serious? You don't know how many weeks are in a year? No, I've had a stroke. <laughs> when? Just now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I smell burnt toast. <laughs> You're like, Bron talking to you is so boring. I just struck out. <laughs> <laughs> My body checked out. <laughs> oh. do, you ever get, do you ever get so messed up that you think you're going to stroke out? Yeah. Yeah. I have. I think I, one time I did have a slight paralysis. <laughs> I did, and I don't know why you're laughing. I say that's the time. Every time I'm honest, I open my heart to people. Mm-hmm. They laugh in my face. You don't have a heart, dude. Yeah, I do. Look, I actually had a tattoo on. <laughs> he has a tattoo of a heart, uh, just I, just I, so he can re- remind himself that there's something in there. It's more of a patch to cover the hole. Yeah. yeah. Do you have tattoos besides the just truth? Truth. That's it. Just one. I haven't figured out anything else I'd want to put on myself. Like like. Uh, Describe this to people and then explain why you got that. I know a girl but, that has a uh, uh, love and hate tattooed around her asshole. Around her asshole? Yeah. Why? Because um, she lost both of her hands in a, a wood chipper, so she couldn't do the left <laughs> and right thing. <laughs> so she went for her asshole. So someone has to wipe it, and every time they do, they're like, come on. Yeah, truth. <laughs> love and hate. <laughs> because when it's muddy, it's hateful, but when you're inside of it, it's truth. Maybe I should have truth around my asshole because the truth is shit. The truth is shit. It's funny that you have a, a tattoo on your wrist that says truth in a city full of fucking liars. Oh, I'm a raging liar, dude. No, actually, you're one of like maybe a half a dozen people in this city that I generally give a fuck about. No, you know what it is? I'm better at it than most people. You I'm are. so shallow, dude. I could give it like seriously. If that bus that just went by hit you, I wouldn't care. And we're friends. <laughs> what a way to find out. <laughs> we're only halfway through the show, and now I know that you wouldn't cry oh. at my my truck driving running over. If somebody came in here and put a pickaxe through your shoulder and started fucking your mouth, <laughs> I would laugh for, <laughs> until you went cold. That was that'd be funny though, dude. It would be. It's funny. like physical. It's like Gallagher, dude. And then I'd piss, piss in your face as the paramedics showed up, and I go, he wanted it this way. Yeah. And then I'd write a note saying that you wanted it that way and put it in your pocket. So <laughs> he died doing what he loves. He died pickaxe <laughs> to the shoulder and Rouse's hot piss part in his hair. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had a girl pee on you when you were awake? When I was awake. Uh, I, I had a girl piss the bed once. I did, too. I have a whole, I have a whole bit about that. Have you heard that? No. <laughs> this girl, it starts out that, I mean... I don't know. I don't wanna, I'm not doing bits. Yeah, no. People. no. But she peed. Yeah, she peed. Was she hammered? She's loaded. Did she deny it? Huh? Did she deny it? She was basically doing it awake. Uh-huh. And I'm like, you're peeing right now. She's like, no, I'm not. You're a liar. She's telling me that she was a liar, that I'm a liar. So was this after the sex? Were you spooning? And she no, no, we weren't having sex. She was so loaded. I was like, I'm not even going to touch this person. Yeah. She's in all her clothes. Uh, it was just like one of those, like, you know, you, and sometimes you should babysit and, like, yeah, an infant. I'll keep this girl from uh, dying like a rock star in my apartment. Yeah. And then I'll, <clears throat> I'll shit can her. Why don't you just stuff her into a, a hockey bag and push her out in the front lawn? I didn't care. You know, and I mean, this is this is the end of the one-liner thing is there's nothing a little Febreze and a good morning fuck won't fix. You banged her in the morning? Hell yeah. 
You are a gentleman. You're, I don't know why your parents are more proud of you. <laughs> you a, was this the piss soaked hooker? <laughs> <laughs> no. When did, what kind of stories did she have when she came home from work? Besides you know what the, the thing is? is she, she was literally like, um, she was in that high end level. You know what I mean? Like not the super, super high end, like crushing governor's careers, but she was actually taking etiquette classes so she could work for this top. Ah. And, um, well, how do you like learn how to walk straight with a dildo on the top of your head? No, it's like so she she could be brought to like like exclusive functions and stuff. Eyes wide she, shut. She had, she had like kind of like almost like a Philadelphia accent, even though she, like she was from Pennsylvania originally. Sound a little. What's and a Philly accent sound like? It's it's like annoying. Yeah. Unsexy. Like if I'm on the phone with my Philly friends, mine comes back. But uh, can you give me a little for people who maybe listening? It's like, hey man. <laughs> First things first is the word yeah isn't everything like yeah man yeah once you go over there open the door and uh fuck now I can't even do it I can't do it on command it just has to happen Eleanor. you know when I do it is when I'm on stage and I, if I'm lost or somebody's heckling me it comes or it, it's an instant snap to that East Coast attitude of like go go fuck yourself you know I don't yeah. have fucking time for this shit yeah yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really it's, clipped it's a reflex it's like a uh, it's a it's a language for assholes yeah. And if you want to treat me like one, then I'm going to regress back to my childhood yeah. and fucking throw a whiskey bottle at your face and then go into the uh, observational stuff. <laughs> What's the deal with whiskey bottles flying through the air? Who are these people? Who are these hecklers? Um, you know, the thing is, I think growing up on the East Coast is everything. Everybody's sarcastic. Yeah. And you learn sarcasm. Unimpressed. And no matter how much you love your buddies, it's just ripping on them nonstop. And I don't like the That's California a, it, vibe isn't. No, because it's not. It's a working class thing. Yeah. I noticed that with even the Latino and the black comedians, everyone kind of rips on each other. And it's healthy. It's a healthy thing to do. You know, I treat some of my closest friends like the worst enemies, but we all have a good time with it. There's, yeah. there's love sown into it. And it's I think it's a term of endearment. Some people might call it bullying or at a glance, but it's fucking hilarious. It's, it's almost like making sure that they stay grounded. So even though somebody's doing really successful, we're like, hey, oh, yeah, you're a doctor now, Whatever. but how many people have you killed? And then literally you see the person go through their head like, yeah, it's a couple of people have died while I had them. And they realize that. It's, so it's not about how many people have you, how many lives have you saved? I'm like, how, how many people didn't you save? And they find it funny. We find it funny. It's dark. Yeah. Dark humor. It's like a, it's like a construction site kind of banter yeah guys talking shit and then what it does is it keeps everybody grounded and they realize hey you know what i'm not that great like we're, we're all struggling through this fucking yeah shitty life. no one's got it figured out but you get a lot of peacocks and stuff in show business for no reason yeah i don't know how many people tell me about what they're doing constantly it's just i don't care i'm i'm just i never asked <laughs> It's like, you know, if somebody's, if somebody's doing something that I'm really in, impressed by, you know, like, like one of my friends just did an, an HBO hour and I, I'm like, that blows me away. You know what I mean? That's, that's the brass ring, gold ring in our, in our business. And, um, so I'm so excited for him, but I get a uh, bronze ring <laughs> from H, from HBO. Yeah. Yeah. They cut me out of the show. Did they really? Yeah. I had a Jim Norton's down and dirty. Like you were too dirty for down and dirty. Yeah. Like they literally were like, ah, we just we can't even we can't use have this. It. Yet they can uh, show beheadings on Game of Thrones, but I can't say fucking cunt. <laughs> what are you gonna do? America's weird that way. Violence, you love it. You love violence. Yeah. But crass humor or anything religious or, or taboo, sex is so repressed here. There's, I don't think that you guys have the freedom of speech that you you tend to weigh that flag a little higher than it, and it should be. No, it's like violence is everywhere and we look at it like, ah, oh, it's nothing. And then, but you know, you, sh you show somebody's boob during the Super Bowl, and it's just a national scandal. Oh, it's like, it's retarded. It's the worst. Have it's, you noticed it? Like you must've noticed, especially Venice beach is, I think a little more socially conscious yeah. place. It's, it's got that I, lack of a better rep, but it's kind of hippie. It's kind of uh, it's, it's Venice. It's cool. It's yeah. got a lot of different things. You got a lot of people, international people there. So you have a more of a broader reference for yep. uh, for uh, everything. And just, in Hollywood, they have their little boxes and what they're chasing and strange. I don't know. Well, it's funny. Like a lot of people, like I love Venice. I love it because it, it is, it's random. It's chaos. It's filth. It's beautiful. It's it's all these things all in one, you know, like, and, uh, but I talked to so many people who are like, you live in Venice. I hate Venice. And, and they can't, they can't wrap their head around it because it's not safe. It's not, you know, it's clean, sanitized. 
you know, like South Bay, like yeah. Manhattan Beach or Hermosa Beach, which are very, very sanitized and, and high end. Boring. Yeah, boring. The but fact, when, I, yeah. I meet somebody in Venice and they're an, they say they're an artist. They're actually painting every day. You know what I mean? They're mm-hmm. actually an artist. And you meet a musician and they're actually out there struggling to make music. And you meet people in Hollywood and they say they, they're all these things and they, 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 they aren't say, willing to do the struggle. Or, they just stood under the title. Yeah. There's so many people that say they're comics and, and this, that, and anything. It's like, when the last time you did a gig in any of those fields? Silly bums. Yeah. I don't know. But what are you going to do? It's California. Have you done, been, what other states have you performed in that you like? Uh, basically all the western states, so Oregon, Washington, Idaho, uh, Ohio, pretty much. I've never really done the South, you know, like, I mean. I'm going to I, Alabama. You are? For uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This week? Yeah. Where are you doing? I'm doing the, the something, I'm opening for Russell Peters. You're opening for Russell Peters? Yeah, yeah. Wait, you? Wait, you? All the, I do it all the time. Really? Yeah, yeah. And his crown isn't like just like 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 just jaw dropping. Watching well, we you. We did. We did. Because um, he's he's relatively clean. Yeah, yeah. But Russell's got that kind of Joe Rogan mentality where he just wants to put on killers. Yeah. And if the audience doesn't dig it, that's fine with them. Like we, I did the. Um, uh, 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 fuck, what was the club called? And uh, the manager came in and said they had 100 complaints. Yeah. And Russell responded with, fuck them. <laughs> fuck them. Yeah, he goes, and, and now I'm going to Alabama with him. How, what what a weird Mobile? thing. Russell Peters and Jason Rouse in Alabama. <laughs> that is, honestly, that's like a I hate honest, crime waiting to happen. But I honestly think that you, you might need to be escorted out of these facilities. Good. Yeah. Good. I, I, I'm there to make an impression. <laughs> if it oh, needs to be will. escorted out of the uh, facilities, facilities, uh, that so be it. But uh, I'm cool with that. And it's not like it's, it's not like I'm tanking. They're usually the complaints off of because I, I, indifference. I, I can't stand it. Yeah. Hate it or love it. And um, provocateur. Yeah. Well, it's it's kind of like I I do Arizona every now and again, and you know Arizona's got all these insane basically anti-Mexican laws, like just this racist crap. Yeah. And I'll go there and yell at them about it. And I remember I got off stage one night. Trying to be a hero in our town, boy. And these, and literally people are, are heckling me. And, and, you know, I got comebacks for everything because I've thought about this probably in a deeper level than they have. Uh-huh. And I know that the liberals are loving me and the conservatives are hating me. All those, a lot of my, because I grew up in a conservative family, a lot of my liberal sh- crap is actually wrapped in conservative thought processes. Mm-hmm. So even some of the conservatives... You're one hybrid. Person, one, one person said, oh my God, it's so good to see a Republican comic after one of my shows. And I was like, I don't think she understood at all what I was saying. And then I realized the way I'm delivering it, she kind of sees it through her own prism. Mm-hmm. But anyway, these people are screaming at me and yelling. And uh, whatever, I'm having a good time. And so I get off stage and some, uh, some other comic goes, dude, I told you not to talk about that stuff here. It's, it's such a hot button topic. He, he goes, what, what, were you, what were you thinking? And, and I go, I have a question. Were those people who were yelling at me, were they bored? No, they weren't bored at all. And, and who are they going to be talking about they on the engaged. drive home? Yeah. They're going to be talking about me. Yeah. They're not going to be talking about some dude, you know, and talking about salt all, shakers. A comic that would come up to you and say that is a fucking idiot. Yeah. Fuck that guy. And for every, t- for you know, if 20% of the crowd hates you. That means you're pushing enough buttons that 20% probably loves you. I want 50-50. <laughs> I want like 50 people that want to burn me mm-hmm. and 50 people that want me to take me home and fuck their family in front of them. Mm-hmm. And um, Yeah, I take it because when it gets 50-50 and they're very strong opinion, mm-hmm. you can see the audience cannibalizing on itself. It's really interesting to see. You'll see people arguing, more so in the UK. Yeah. They're more vocal about their opinions. And I've seen people get in fist fights <coughs> during my show on my behalf yeah you shut the fuck up and sit down no you shut the fuck up he said this if you don't like it you can fuck off you know <laughs> and it's great i'm standing there going great you know there, at least there's some some point of view and uh, and some conflict there it makes for a great show yeah you can't have everybody leave him with a fucking if, flower in their hair and a smile on their face if you don't start with at least one riot a year you you failed no. no no any great comedian that i've ever appreciated had a very split decision as, as a performer and uh yeah. There's more gold in that in the long run, I think. 
if it's done well, because there's some people that go up and just burn the room. Yeah. And come off stage and go, yeah, I'm a fucking hero. Fuck them. No, you know, you've got to, there's got to be it, it, at the least 50 yeah. 50 on it. Or it, it's, uh, you're just, you're, you've, you're, you're, uh, you're a hack. And you've, you're standing behind the, uh, the, um, the line of, well, they just didn't get me then. Yeah. And we all know those guys. We don't have to name names, but there's some yeah. comics that are just like, they go up and they're just not really acknowledging the, the complete dynamic of what's really happening. It's denial for the yeah. most part. I also, well, there's, I think there's another denial, which is there are people who are like total crushers, but they're crushing with something that's so interchangeable with the guy who's going to be there the next week. You know what I mean? Like it's real s- simple, basic, yeah. basic comedy. It's played out and it's familiar, yeah. dirty comedy or, you know, edgy stuff. But it, it, the mechanics of it, it's, it's traditional. Yeah. And I see those people and, I, and I'm like, you can't deny what's happening in the crowd. You can't. And I, like, I, I respect them because they do that. But I'm like, you're not memorable because someone else, the second you're done doing it, someone else is doing the same exact thing. And, you know, the crowd doesn't really care if it's you there or the other guy there. I want them to care that it's me or not me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. I think the best case example of that kind of... I've seen people have inner struggles with their morals, like when watching David tell. But he's so undeniably funny Yeah, that you can't... Even the most uptight people that have been brought to the show are in tears. Yeah. And that that's the best. And then them not having... It's so potent and so great that they don't have a chance to check themselves... And yep. look around and make sure you know they just they're committed. They're, they've they've sucked into it and they they're yeah. enjoying it themselves his, un, uh, his, reluctantly. His writing is is undeniable. It's it's incredible. Killer. He's my he's my uh, Dave's my favorite comedian. Yeah, it's funny. The first time I ever saw him, like I'd seen him on TV and stuff. Yeah, and I heard comics talking about how great he was, but I, I just, the live like, I didn't get it. I just saw him on TV. I'm like, yeah, it's funny, yeah. but whatever. And then I was in New York. And I saw that he was his he, backyard. He was still in the cellar, which is his workout spot. Yeah. I saw he was on the lineup. My friend who manages the place said, yeah, go down and watch him. Go down and watch him. And I saw him, and I was like, holy crap. And I went back the next night watched him again, and it was the same bit. First place I saw him, too, at and the cellar in New York. He had, he had new punchlines on half the jokes. I was like, this is crazy. So I went back at the end of the week and went to go see him again because I was like, I want to see which of the two punchlines yeah, he chose. His process. Now, whole, whole new set of punchlines. And I was like, what is going on? And my, my friend who loves him, he thinks he's the greatest comic ever, he goes, he goes, do you realize if you could get, he's like, all he does is write and he just throws out the best jokes you've ever seen. He goes, if you could get into his garbage can, you'd be the second best comic in America. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. His throwaway shit, you could carry that for a, on a career for 10 years, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? It is great. And what a, what a sweetheart of a guy. You oh, know? nicest and, guy ever. And uh, another guy who's a, a, a prominent figure in stand-up who's consistently having uh, up-and-coming comics go on the shows and yeah. he helped them. He's doing uh, David Tell's um, uh, underground comedy. Gra- uh, yeah, Comedy Road Underground. Work, comedy Underground. Great, great. You know, he's taken all these comics that couldn't do regular television now and uh, under the umbrella of a late-night comedy show in a nightclub in a bar where people are drinking. It's how it should be. It actually looks a lot like uh, your room. What are you laughing at? <laughs> are you looking at girls behind me? Nothing. What happened to your back, dude? Did you fall down? No. Did you go boom, boom? I did. <laughs> I fell down. I tackled your hooker girlfriend down a flight of <laughs> stairs to bury one in her shitter. Uh, I, I stepped out of a car and didn't look and slid down a palm tree. And it was all... <laughs> yeah, I know. I was going to say bar fight or something, but no. I uh, You know, the palm trees here in Los Angeles, they're not as smooth. Like at the base of them, yeah. it was all like a fucking cheese grater. And I put my foot back to step on the grass and just went <laughs> and grinded up my leg. So this is so this is the kind of stories you tell on, on your <laughs> safe word. I know I'm working on it. And uh, thanks. Next time I'll record this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a rehearsal. I got Chris Rocks on his way down right now. What's that? You heard me. <laughs> I'm yep. looking forward to doing some shows. I gotta get. I'm gonna go do some stuff in Norway and shit. I think. It's yeah, you gotta set up that Canada thing for me. Yeah, I'm September. still. I'm, I'm still waiting for the uh, paperwork, but it's it's all in. Good, and the, it's gonna go through. You, uh, Bronson here is gonna uh, come out and do some shows with me in Toronto, in the Ontario area, uh, which will be fun. We're gonna do some stoner rooms and some clubs and stuff, and take you around, and meet some of my friends, come to my hometown, yeah. and go. Oh, this is why. <laughs> this is this is what oh. happened to you. 
Every comic is emotionally disturbed. Everyone. Otherwise, I don't think you'd feel the need to stand in no, front of a microphone and tell. Quite, I'm a pretty well balanced individual. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not a complete shit ball, but I have my bad days and my good days. Like how? Like it was fifty five hundred fifty thousand people in this town that you grew up in. Yeah, that's that's actually, I mean that's a big city. It is a big city, but it has a kind of it's very kind of working class steel town. Yeah, it's got that, that kind of Boston, Jersey, you know, what the fuck are you looking at kind of attitude. And I've just been but, getting news feeds from the local paper what stabbing. You looking at a? Yeah, <laughs> no, hey, what are you a fucking retard? Hey, <laughs> yeah, it happens. I know it sounds silly nice to you, too. But when you got a, a fucking a Hamiltonian fucking jaw crusher in front of you and you're giggling about his accent, that ain't going to get you out of a fucking Rodney King right there in downtown Hamilton. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You could say that while they're stomping on your ribs. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm because, sorry. And you're laughing through the whole thing. I'm sorry. Say it. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> Did my face get in the way of your fist? I'm sorry. But that's cool. You're gonna come to Canada. Yeah, I can't I'm wait. excited. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, uh, you're gonna blend in fine. Oh uh, yeah, I you're know. gonna do great. You're gonna do shows. You're gonna meet some cool people. I got this beard now. That, that's Canadian, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'll have to tell people that you're my friend, so they don't just look at you as like a, a, a window to throw rocks at. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be related to that. I'll have to introduce you to the regular, usual suspects, mm -hmm. and then you'll be fine. It'll be like Rouse's friend. No. But if you're like, we're in front and you say America, and then it's going to be right. oh. really bad. Oh, really one bad. of those guys. They're looking for any reason. The stabbings going up. There's some phantom rapist. Now there's been uh, a, a lot of uh, assaults, beatings. It's uh, Yeah, but not so much gun violence, right? No. Very little shootings. We're more of a punch in the face, stab you kind of place. Yeah. But, but you guys have weapons there. The Glasgow of, uh, of Canada, I would say. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear about like all, you know. There's so many stabbings and beatings over in the UK, but they don't have guns, so they don't shoot each other. Yeah. And it here, is it is going up a bit, but nowhere compared to the US. But uh, you live another a, day. If someone beats you, you opposed to getting shot. Yeah. And the fact, because the beatings there, no one wants to get shot because they don't want to die, but they'll kick the piss out of you because they got health care. Yeah. Right? In England and Canada, you could someone could beat you to death with a golf club or, or an inch of your life. You could throw you and patch you up, and you wouldn't even see a bill. Yeah. That's nice. That's, that's good. You know, when you get knifed, you don't want to get a bill, too. Oh, no, no. Can you imagine? What did that tip, that's insult to injury right there. I got to go pay off my stitches. I was talking to somebody the other day, and they got, like, apparently some dude came up from behind him and hit him with a mag light. You know what a mag light is? Those yeah, big yeah, flashlight, yeah. metal flashlights. And uh, I used to use one of those on your ex-girlfriend. Oh yeah, those thirteen battery mag lights. Uh -huh. I'd put it all the way in, and she'd do a handstand. I'd be ten hours running down a train tunnel that smelled like fish. <laughs> <laughs> she shoot the spotlight up in the air like it was Hollywood premiere. Yeah, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Milton Burrow would come out and just beat off in her face. Hey. <laughs> Mister Television, what a mighty horn you have! So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's anyway. So this guy gets he gets hit over the head. With this mag light, and like a sucker punch kind of a way, like from behind, and then the guy hit him again with it in the head. And so that's he a heavy up, mag light is is like a crowbar. Yeah, that's and like like literally like in most states in America, you can't have more than a three battery mag light. What? The four battery ones considered a weapon, oh. and uh, you know like cops carry them, and, and you know sometimes they'll carry that instead of a, a yeah, baton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know because the thing weighs four or five pounds at least yeah and uh anyway he gets hit by it twice he has to go to the hospital he ends up with seventeen thousand dollars for the medical bills and then he you know he didn't have insurance and they were like like as he's checking out some one of the nurses he's like i don't know how i'm gonna pay for this this guy hit me and the nurse goes oh you can fill out as long as there's a police report there's some paperwork you can fill out and it should get covered by the Don't state void should it. ah okay yeah 50 50. how much how many thousands of dollars was it 17. Because he got like MRIs and all kinds of tests and stayed overnight. He Charged stayed overnight in a hotel. Q tip, every cotton yeah. ball bandage. I heard that, like band aids and stuff. Yeah. And the, uh, yeah, and the band aid, like, you know, what's a nickel? They charge like 10 bucks for it. Come on, America. Help the people. Yeah. But uh, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, man. And uh, good luck. And what's your, all your social media again? show uh i got a 10 o'clock show at the counting house in edinburgh called what comes out and then i have another one at 12 30 
at City Cafe that I co-host with Martin Moore, who anybody from the UK probably knows. Mm -hmm. Very, very, very funny guy. We co-host it. It's called Low Olympics, Laugh Out Loud Olympics. It's a couple of comics, a lot of games that we play with the audience. Have fun. Cool, man. Yeah, man. Have a great Edinburgh, and uh, I'll see you when you get back. I will. All right. I hope you get laid before I get back. Ah. You'll be less angry. Well, what's that girl's number that puts a flashlight <laughs> in her pussy? I love her. Bye-bye. Don't kiss me on the mouth. Don't ask if you're hurting me. And if you hear the safe word, stop what you're doing immediately. Do you have pantyhose? <laughs>